Hey guys, John here. Welcome back to the series, How to Use Bus Force. This is video six and the last video of the series. So hopefully you've learned something if you made it all the way to the end here. And in this last video, we're going to be talking about the routing because now we know what the equalizer does, the filter does, compressor, saturation. Now we should really focus on the routing and how we're going to move these modules around to get the sound that we want. So with that being said, let's kind of recap here. So once we open up bus force, we have to realize we have a dry path, we have a comp path for the compressor, and we have a saturation path. And this output trim is basically the control for our overall volume, everything that's kind of going into the plugin and what's coming out of the plugin. This output trim is going to be the final gain staging that we want to adjust. So if it's a little too loud, too quiet, this is the knob we want to reach for. So with that being said, our dry path, if we go ahead and click these uh, some of these knobs here, we're going to see this diagram. So this diagram is a nice visual representation of where our stuff is getting routed in addition to these things down over here. So right now on default, when we, when we play something, what we're actually hearing is going to be this sat path here set to 0 dB, so it's default and it's unmuted. So what's happening is this path here is getting sent to, to the equalizer, to the filter, to the compressor, then to the saturation, then to our ears. And that same thing happens here. It's going to go in, it's going to get processed by the EQ, then the filter, then the compressor. It's going to go down here because this is the sat path. It's going to get saturated and then it's going to go to our output over here. So the comp path and the dry path are muted right now. So if we wanted to unmute this, we would do that. And now we have a comp path and a sat path going through. Now, by default, this compressor is going to be all the way to the bottom. So we can always increase this here and kind of mix in what we want to happen. So in this case, in the comp path, we have an EQ, the filter, and then the compressor, then it goes out, which this comp path, it goes into the EQ, the filter, the compressor, and then out. Makes sense. And then for our dry path here, the EQ here is disabled. So what's actually happening here, it's going in and then it's going up here. It's not even getting touched by the EQ and then it's going straight output. So it's basically like there's no change to our track here. So what we can do, let's say maybe we want to compress it, saturate it, but we also want a little bit of our original dry signal in there. And that's where we'd go to mix this in as well. Because at the end of the day, this is kind of a mixer, right? We we're mixing these different paths together to our final output, which goes to our output trim. So for example, let's say, let's do a new preset and let's kind of like work something up here with this track that we got going. So in this case, for example, let's just say I want to run it all through our sat path and then just kind of go through all these modules here. So for that situation, I'd go to the EQ. And then maybe I want to accentuate some low end or something like that. So on the frequency, I might go to 150, 160, something like around there, start increasing a little bit. And then this curve here, since it's kind of linear, maybe we want to change this curve here to drop down a little bit of that mud, increase our low end. Then maybe get some presence here. So what I've done here is we have a little bit more low end here, kind of reducing the muds, giving it some presence here. And then here for this curve, we're kind of doing the opposite, kind of removing some of that harsh presence and then increasing some of the airy brightness of the track. And then without the EQ. And then with. So we get low end fatness, we get some more presence and then some nice crispiness here. In this situation for the filter, I don't really feel like I necessarily need to use it, but it's good to know that it's there. So I'm gonna go ahead and disable the filter for now. So now we're just gonna go into the compressor here. And I might want something maybe three or four, depending on what you want. So we have some light compression going on here, added a little bit of makeup, makeup gain at about 3 dB. And now for this situation, if we want to go into the saturation module, we can do that as well. And then maybe, let's see, let's see, let's maybe add some even harmonics. And then maybe you want a little bit of overdrive. All 
Okay, so now we're in a decent spot. We've run it through an EQ, we bypassed the filter, we did some compression, some saturation. And let's say we like this sound, but we still want to sneak in a little bit of the dry signal here. So in that situation, you can always unmute this here and kind of mix it in together. And now it's starting to get a little bit louder and this is where the output trim comes in handy. So something like this might be in a workflow that you might like, and then we can always disable and enable the plugin with the power here and kind of see how far we've come. So this is bypassed entirely, and then enabled. And then another routing thing that I did want to share with you too, we can always go to a new preset. So let's say for example, we want to have a regular dry, dry signal going out, but we also only want a certain amount of our frequency range to be really compressed. So what we would do is let's go, go ahead and unmute our dry path. Let's double click this to zero. So it's basically just going through the dry path. Now let's say for example, let's keep the saturation knob muted or the saturation path muted, unmute our compressor. So we have both of these channels going out, these paths going out. Now for our compressor here, let's say we don't want any EQ, we just want the filter and the compressor. So let's go to the filter here. And that's what we can do also is what we can solo by right clicking. So right now we're just listening to the compressor, which is going through the filter here. So what we can do is double click this here so we can actually hear it, right? And then in our filter, we can kind of narrow down a certain area. So let's say this sound here is only what we want to compress. So let's go to our compressor now and do some compression. Let's give it some really good compression. So let's say we like something like that, right? So let's unsolo this here. So now we have our comp path and our dry path going. So if we turn this all the way down, what we're listening to is that filtered that filtered signal that we just did, this move over here, then we're hitting it with a compressor and then it's going to our output. Now, if we have our dry path muted and down, this is only what we're hearing. Now, now we want to unmute this and then increase our dry path to our signal. And let's say now we like this, but we do want to have a little bit of saturation. Then we'd go ahead and unmute the saturation path, disable the compressor and the filter, and then have something kind of like that. Let's try thick in this case. Give some nice overdrive. So there's a lot of different ways to route things. That's just kind of the thought process of thinking kind of how you want things to go and then go ahead and enable and disable these different buttons here and then just kind of mix those to how you think it sounds good. And then you can always control the output trim. And at the very, very, very last stage, let's say we're happy with something like this. We also have an additional clipper that we turn on right over here and then take a listen to how this sounds. And keep in mind for this thing to work, you turn it to the left to start clipping as opposed to turning it to the right. So take a listen. So that's a very drastic sound, but I kind of wanted you to listen to see what it's actually doing. And a little bit of this goes a very long way. More so, take a listen to the kick drum. So something in this case, I'd probably do something like this. And then we can see this light turn on every time it starts to clip. which is mostly on the kick drum for uh, this setting here. 
And then the last thing we need to talk about on this bar is just a quick overview of the input trim. So if we go to a new preset, once we turn this here, the buttons or the knobs are going to be linked from the output to the input. So if we want to have a little bit more input, increasing our volume into bus force, then it's going to compensate for the output trim, keeping us at a same level, but increasing the signal into the uh, plugin so we can drive our compressor a little bit better. If our signal is a little bit too hot, we can always reduce the input trim and it's also going to increase the output so it stays the same for the volume. And that's linked on this green button over here. So if you don't like that functionality, you can always turn that on and off. And then the last thing, this output trim is independent. So you can move this input trim all day and they're gonna be linked, but the output trim is gonna be independent regardless if this is on or off. So the last couple technical things, if you made it this far, is gonna be linear phase and the DC blocker. So if you're mixing a lot of different signals together, like we're doing with the dry path, comp path, and sap path, this linear phase is gonna be on by default to help with phase cancellation or weird phasing issues that might happen when we're kind of doing this type of mixing thing. But it does increase the latency a little bit, so it's kind of something that you want on if you're mastering or you know, a little bit more latency might be maybe annoying, but it's kind of something that you want to keep on. You can always select this here and go to minimum phase, which is going to be a little bit quicker, but you're not going to really have that linear phase solidness that you would like to have for mastering or something like that. And last but not least, DC blocker. So if that's kind of confusing, I made a uh, patch here in Citrus. So for example here, I have another patch here. So let's load up this bus for us. So let's turn this DC blocker off for now. And then I have this signal right over here and let's turn that way down because it's going to be super loud so in citrus here i basically just have a kind of a triangle wave kind of thing going here kind of sine triangle and if you look up here on this oscilloscope you can see that it's oscillating in the center of this line here now in citrus i can click this button here and have it oscillate only on the top line so basically we're having a waveform that's oscillating only in the positive territory so if we have a waveform like this, it's not necessarily using the full digital resolution because it's not oscillating in the center. It's only oscillating up here, leaving all this space down over here that we could use. So if you have something like that that's getting sent into BuzzForce, BuzzForce is gonna look at that and say, okay, this is obviously wrong, that we don't want this waveform oscillating above this line. So if we have DC blocker on, take a look at what happens now. It sinks it right into the center. So if you're ever sending signal and it's kind of not really at zero, it's kind of oscillating above or below the uh, the center line over here with DC blocker on, it's going to notice that and it's going to push it into the center to utilize the maximum digital resolution that uh, Bus Force can offer you and that you can use in your stuff. So hopefully that makes sense. A little quick demonstration, right? That's on. Keeps it in the center. If it's off again here, it's going to be oscillating only at the top. So that's something I would highly suggest to always keep on. Uh, don't really see any reasons to keep it off, but yeah. That's uh, it's always there if you need it. So yeah, that concludes the Bus Force series here. Hopefully you liked it. Hopefully you learned something. Thank you so much for watching. And yeah, we'll see you in the next video as always.